Welcome to this week's fishing report at Bud and Mary's. A little windy, but uh, it has not stopped the fish from biting. Cloud Nine just came in. It looks like they got a barrel full of mahi. We're gonna see when they unload them. I know Captain Dylan on the B&M. That's the 34 Crusader. They had a nice catch of mahi today. They had them on a half day, which was nice. We don't do too many half day mahi trips, but they said the fish were close in, only you know seven, eight miles offshore. So it paid off for him and his honeymoon couple. But uh, we're gonna send you down there with Captain Greg and see how they did on the Cloud Nine. Up. Today was good. We um, we had some big wind yesterday. It uh, muddied up the water a little bit, but uh, lots of uh, migrating fish going to the northeast. These guys did good. 25 schoolie dolphin and let some go. It's good fishing. I don't have any mahi in Iowa. No. Early bird just came in. Late August fishing report here at Bud and Mary's. Ross, give us a rundown what you got. I see some mahi, I see some triple tail. Yeah, so we started out catching some pilchards for live bait, and then on the way out, uh, Billy saw some uh, blackbirds circling, and they led us to a big piece of floating rope, like a uh, hauser rope, like a real big, thick rope, and it ended up being pretty loaded up with mahi, so we probably caught, you know, eight or ten nice ones and threw a few back, and then we, uh, and then we back in there, and there's a couple triple tails there we were able to catch a couple triple tails off of it. Then we went out to the hump to catch tunas and the sharks were pretty bad and they weren't biting very good. So we decided to come back to the reef and catch some yellowtail snappers and finish off the day. So we caught, uh, I don't know, 15 or 18 mahis and uh, you know, a mess of snappers for dinner. Good fishing. Was it rough or was it calm? It was, it was uh, medium. medium, light medium, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Have you been with rocks before? Have you been here before? Been here. Okay, cool. Sales. Twelve sales. What? That's a triple tail. Who caught the triple tail? Billy Bob. Billy. Yeah. 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 They're good eating. Plenty looking. A dozen sales of Captain West. <laughs> Spartan just came in. Captain Mike. Brooks from Provider on with him today. I see a bucket full of a cooler full of mahis. Mike, we need a fish report. How was it today? Team effort today. It was good. We started on the hump. We caught a handful of tunas. And uh, we've had some like north northeast winds, so it kind of like made the near shore water kind of muddy and dirty. But we found a good co uh, current edge and color change out in like a thousand feet. And there was debris and weed, and fish were kind of like running down that alleyway. So once we once we found the right condition, fishing was good. We were able to stay with a few packs and find some debris and picked away at some schoolie dolphins. And this it's you know late August here now and. The fishing has probably been better the last few weeks than it was most of the summer. Everybody thinks season's over here because a lot of kids go back to school. People aren't traveling as much this time of year, but this is a great time of year to come down here. Not as much competition out there fishing, and the fishing actually can be better. Some of these seasonal patterns just seem to be later and later each year. I think yeah. Mike can attest to that. So Absolutely. Should when I come kid, down and go fishing with you? When the kids go to school, come out and play. <laughs> yep, leave Brooks at home with kids yeah, and go fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, nice job on your fish. Awesome. Yeah, that was good. It's, good time, it so. seems like it's getting better and better. I think pretty much the whole fleet found the same edge and like did that. really well. Like, there's a lot of fish out there today. So, I would uh, assume you're going to get some good reports all around. The bait showed back up today, so it's lining up to be a good few weeks ago. I can see this. Captain Greg just came in on Cloud Nine. They got a nice catch of mahi, some jacks, and I can see they're racking some of the fish themselves. So either one of them did it or Ben might have put that one upside down. But I do like it. Did you, get, you got that one? Yeah. That's he's good. Gonna take, he's going to take credit. Give us there a report, Greg. It looks like the dolphin, a few better size ones, some gaffers, yeah, like you said. A little better. Words, uh, we found a turtle with some gaffers on it. We went back to them three times. They wouldn't separate from the turtle, and the turtle kept running down sea. And uh, so we got back and picked off, I don't know, 10 or 12 off of that one, and then found a couple other schools that were uh, going northeast pretty hard. And uh, nicer fish, like 680, 750, something like that, not too far. A couple couple big jacks on the bottom rod. Yeah, they had a request. These boys are from the west coast of Florida, and they uh, love their amber jacks. So we went to the uh, 409, and it was a funny current out there. It was going southwest on the top and northeast on the bottom, which worked out nice. all right. Fishing, you don't know where you go. Yeah, we got a big amber jack in the left oh, oh, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. 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 We're here at the Real McCoy, they're coming in. I see a bucket full of mahi over there. Raymond, you want to give us a report? Looks like some schoolies today for you. Yeah, there's a current edge out of a thousand feet. There was fish inside of it and on the edge. 
We lost more than we caught. We still have a nice, maybe close to 20 fish. Can't complain at all. I almost cut my hand off. The famous Muffin. Justin, his real name is The Mate, but his nickname is Muffin. Do we know how he got the nickname Muffin? He was eating a muffin at Whale Harbor, or Holiday Isle, when he was a kid. And one of the guys came over and says, we're going to call you Muffin from now on. Was it Steve Leopold or somebody else? I don't remember who he said it was. Sometimes you get a nickname and it sticks with you. That's like 20 years and counting for him. Yeah. But there's still some mahi around, which is good. And it's, it's getting better and better. It's good to see. Yeah. We got the Miss Alamerta headboat still out there, so we'll see what they got. Hopefully they got some yelltails and I think they're the last put out today, so we'll find out and let you know. The buzz, up, the buzz on is in. They've got a bucket full of mahis. Pretty good fishing for you, a lot of schoolies? Yes, sir. <laughs> Late season, kids are back in school and the fish are biting. That's right. A lot of schooling. We were in uh, 500 to 650. And uh, a lot of sets. Most of the fish in there were deeper, so we never really had to go any deeper. This is as many fish that we've seen all year, probably more honestly, so come on down here. Get on the action. Tan man just came in with Captain Matt. I see a rack full of mahis. Good job, Matt. Thank fish, you. Fish still out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, funny this time of year, it's like you got to relearn it again. So you're not fishing every day how you were. So we had a few days off. We got out there and uh, ended up finding our fish about midday and a little further than we normally go. I think we're 22, 23 miles, but we got it done and a long troll home after that. That's good for us. We got the field out here. <laughs> Well, nice job. I'm sure everybody had a good time. Like you said, it's slower here now. People aren't traveling as much, but it doesn't mean there's not fish here. Fishing's like, good this right is now, yeah. better than it was most of the summer, honestly. For you sure. Saw almost every boat that came in today had 20 plus mahi, so. Good yep. to see. Well, good job. Thank you, thank you. Man, I, 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 I'm the guy that was sick the whole time. <laughs> you were seasick? Oh my God, the whole time. Where are you guys I, from? Are you from, from Tampa. Tampa. From Tampa? Yeah. yeah. Now, did you have too many beers last night or just a little choppy for you? No, no I just, I'm just, you just get I get seasick. All right, who caught yeah. the biggest dolphin? I get seasick. Right she did. Now she wants to be interviewed, no. she said. So. Now I heard if you catch the biggest fish, you got to pay for the trip. Is that true? Yes. 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 Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys? You got to buy the round of drinks. Oh my gosh, we had a blast. Have you been with Matt before? No, we have not. Will you go with him again? Absolutely. 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 So you Hands recommend down. him? You recommend Hands down. Hands down. Absolutely. Hands down. Matt and Ryan were a great Hands team. Down. They did amazing, and as you can see, they did amazing. Us, so, uh, Do they drive you to drinking or just on vacation? No, we are just on vacation. Alright, so the stress was not from Matt and them. You <laughs> no. guys, they're a good crew. You show you a good time. We didn't right. Captain Ryan and are giving you praise. Yeah, About time great, you cleaned up your act. They're a great team. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. they're they're Ryan team, kept yeah. the boat nice and clean, cockpit coordinator and all that stuff. So. And they know where the fish are. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, I know where there's 28 less. So. <laughs> Matt thought it was 26 or 28. The Miss Alamorada head boat just came in. They do all their reef trips here. It's an all-day fishing trip. Currently 95 bucks per person. Usually go after yellowtail snapper, mangrove snapper, mackerel. When grouper in season, somebody's get a grouper. A fish like that on the reef, we're gonna see what they caught here. And uh, you know, this is probably the most affordable way to get out fishing and have a good time here in Alamorada. And you know, have a good quality experience still and not break the bank. We've got a young angler here coming off the party, but what's your name, buddy? Yeah. Good to meet you, where are you from? New Jersey. New Jersey, and I see they got dinner in here. Yellowtail snapper? Hello? Yellowtail snapper, right? Yeah. Have you guys caught them before? Show uh, the camera. Yeah, one last night. You got one last night. This is one of the best eating fish in the Florida Keys. You gonna fry them up? What are you gonna do? Who's cooking them? Dad? Yeah. Not you? You're gonna eat them though, right? Yeah, I'm gonna eat them. Did you have fun? Yeah. Anybody get seasick? No. Good. Good. You gonna come back and visit us? Yeah. I hope so. A good job on fish, a good job on dinner. So they're on a load in a light crowd. It's like 10 people today? Ten. And that's about the minimum, right? That is our bare minimum. So that's the bare minimum. Ten people to go. Everybody got dinner covered? I think everyone's got dinner covered, yeah. Uh, a nice pick. Everybody did real well. You said the mangrove yeah, snappers kind of disappeared, but the yeah, yellowtails finished off on the mangroves. We're catching some yellowtails. We've got a lot of rainbow runners today. Okay. A few bottom fish out deep. Okay, a little, little mixed bag. Good. Now, are you guys going to stay open for a while? Or are you going to the boatyard soon? We are going to the boatyard right after Labor Day. We're going to be fishing every day up until then. Hopefully back in days to two weeks tops. So they'll be, the missile will be shut down in the boatyard getting some work done from Labor Day until about two weeks, maybe 10 to 14 days? Yeah. So, you know, September 5th to the 20th or so, it'll be out of commission. 
So check the website, give them your office call, and we'll let you know. Perfect. So keep this in mind if you guys want an affordable option to come out here and go fishing. Found ourselves a keeper grouper today. Oh, How, about yeah. How about that? How about that? Keeper grouper. Grouper. First, first red grouper of the season. Really? Let's see you got the smorgasbord on your table. Look at that. We got porgies, we got rainbow runners, we got mangroves. And the yellow tail. Yellow tail. They got the true uh, Florida Keys reef sample right there. The little sushi fish, a little fried fish. The rainbow runners are good sashimi, right? Oh, they're excellent. So the they're rainbow runners got the stripes there, and you can hear them tell you they're very good to eat. The Catch them out of yellow tail. And sometimes you get bigger ones on live bait, but uh, kind of like a pinkish meat and really good sashimi. Good job, you guys. Making the best of it, and uh, that'll wrap it up. Ray, where they behave? Yeah. They behave. Really good. <laughs> okay, Look good. at this. That's almost over half, half limit of all the other cell snappers. That's a good catch for two people. I'll take it. Who got the grouper? Oh, you did? Two, two strawberries. Nice. Right here. Right here. Where are you from? From, from Texas. From they, Texas. Only, they only get that big. Maybe a little bit bigger. Not much, though. Not much. That's a good size one. Hey, I tell you what, those ones are full grown. Yeah. Those ones ain't getting no bigger. That's a Was Ray good? Was he behaved? Yeah, wonderful. Honestly. Wonderful. Yeah. You're telling the truth there. <laughs> well, thank you. Glad to hear it. Thank you. We're here with Captain Dylan for the B&M. I see two big giant bags of tuna. How many tuna does he get? I think we got four. One was like 15, 16 pounds. Nice. First, first baits out this morning, so that was On a good surprise. Bait? Yep. Live, live baiting them. It was good. We're about 600 feet. Just a bunch of random schools out there. Nice. Nice. see kind some eyes up out there. For us. How many yeah. lives you get? I, I think we got a handful, six or eight. One nicer one. That's a nice couple gaffers. Yeah. Nice bull up there. Did you guys have fun today? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. You mind being on camera? Yeah. Have you been here problem. before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They fish with Dylan? Oh, yeah, yeah. With Dylan. I saw your picture. You caught a bunch of mahis a couple days ago, right? No. No, no. no. This is you right here? It is, yeah. Oh, you're, you're famous too. <laughs> Dylan has the original boat, the OG boat. Oh, did you guys reef fish the other day then or no? Yeah, we did. Okay, gotcha. We had a good time. Okay, cool. Great well, time. I should say great time. So Dylan behaved. How was Tyler's nickname is Squid. We gave him that nickname 25 years ago. Squid. Okay. Does it make sense? Squid, squid's yeah, a work. It does, yeah, it looks yeah. like a squid. He's in there squidding around. So. <laughs> yeah, they'll stop moving, that's for sure. Yeah, where are you guys from? Uh, Vero Beach. Okay, not too far then. Well, I think we're all in for some rain the next couple of days, so, yeah, so at least you got uh, out today. Yeah, we're going to tie up or put some extra lines yeah, on. Yeah, put some extra lines on, so. Well, I'm glad you guys had fun. And it was awesome, man. Was hopefully awesome. see you guys back down. Did you stay at the marina or somewhere else? We stayed at the White Bay Court right down the street. Okay, not too far then. Awesome. Well, let's check these mahis out. How big is that fish, Dylan? He's 16 pounds. I was going to say 16 to 18 pounds. There's this bull. Nice gaff. for almost slammer status. 2023 slammer, no doubt. but. <laughs> yeah, right. Solid gaffer there, another gaffer cow there, a couple schoolies, some tunas. They had a good day on the B&M there. Yeah. Well, uh, good to see you. So, there's a tropical storm out there, which they're predicting to be a hurricane. But I think it's be west of us. So, I think we're probably going to get some rain and some wind from hit my it. Hometown. It may hit Crystal River, where he's from, you know, west coast of Florida. So, everybody in the path of it, I hope you guys stay safe and hopefully it's not too bad. Let's uh, keep on moving on. What's up, guys? Captain Rick Stanzik, and we're here at the dock. We're going through a little bit of uh, hurricane prep right now. We got Tropical Storm Adelia out there. It formed a couple days ago off of Mexico, and it's kind of just shooting up the coast. Doesn't look like it's going to be a major threat to us, but it might cause some problems on the west coast of Florida. But it's a good reminder to get ready uh, for this time of year, and you know, you never know what these storms are going to do, so uh, we always take extra time to secure the boats, make sure everything's tied up good, and we're gonna kind of walk you through uh, some of the things we go through and some things to look out for. The main thing is generally with the boats, you wanna get as many lines as you can on there um, from as many points as you can, because uh, you know a hurricane and, and these extreme winds, they, they're gonna find the weakest link and they're gonna break it. So you wanna make sure you got everything uh, tied up and secured really good. So we go around you know, to all the pilings and we try to attach ropes you know, to different spots areas where you know you can spring off from a certain spot tie off to keep from floating up too far early bird here has several lines out this is kind of one of the tougher positions to dock at the marina because you have all the current here and you got to kind of come in sideways but he's got ropes you know here 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 up there uh there's no pilings on the other side so that's kind of the best you can do uh, but anyways we get you know doubled up in most of those spots and she's sitting pretty here, so hopefully everything will ride out all right. 
Other important thing, of course, is getting rid of things that are going to blow away. So you got to just secure everything that you normally leave laying around. You know, you never know when you get those high wind gusts and something's going to go flying in the water. So that's another important thing too. One of our big concerns always is the houseboats that we have at Bud and Mary's here. You know, these are like floating motel rooms. They just kind of sit and people rent them and stay on them. But when a big storm's coming, we got to get them out of here because uh, they're not safe just sitting here. And most of them don't run and have working motors. So what we usually do is we go tie them up in the mangroves and we have to use one of the small skiffs to drag them out of here. It's a big process and it takes two or three days to get everything kind of set up. This storm doesn't look like it's gonna you know, really turn into anything and we're feeling pretty safe, so we've left everything here. But again, we've tied ropes up you know, on both sides of the boat in multiple places to really secure everything. One other thing we do, you know, we usually end up killing the power and water out here, you know, just because it's a storm and you never know when you're gonna lose that or something's gonna break. And of course, electricity or uh, water flowing out like crazy is not gonna be a good thing and you might not notice it. So that's all another safety precaution we take. But they've been working on everything out here and got all the lines again doubled up. So everything's looking pretty, uh, pretty tight for uh, what we're gonna be, be experiencing here shortly. So me and Captain Steve, who runs my boat, we're down here this morning just kind of tightening things up on my boat. My boat I keep in a hydro hoist boat lift which is really a safe thing and it's great when you have a storm because uh, obviously it keeps the boat up out of the water and it also protects it so if it's bouncing around in the slip here it's got a lot of plastic and metal on both sides you know that's going to hit the pilings before the boat does uh, so you don't got to worry about your boat sinking you don't got to worry about your boat bouncing into anything um, you can move these things around unlike davits you're not permanently tied to wherever it's positioned you know in the marina you can move it if I had to bring this thing into the mangroves because I thought this was going to be a major storm, just simply drive it over there with the boat on it and uh, you're going to be good to go and tie it up into the mangroves. So uh, lets me sleep better at night when we have storms rolling through. This thing does have a top on it, which of course you could take off if you were really worried about the wind. Last year I ended up just putting ropes over it because, uh, you know, I want a little extra security. But these tops were rated up to like 80 mile an hour winds, probably been through 60 plus and I've never had a problem with the top coming off. We've got some extra ropes on there too, so that keeps it real safe. Uh, they're great things. I know when I bought this in 2019, they had a bunch of boats go through Hurricane Florence up there in the Carolinas in 2018, and they said they all did great, you know, in the marinas and harbors that they were at. No one sank, no one had any major damage that had their boat on a hydro hoist. Something to think about if you're looking for a boat lift, uh, you know, put that on your list of things to check out. But we also doubled up the lines to the pilings and stuff back here and back here. And we got a rope here, you know, tied directly to the boat, you know, just in case. Uh, but yeah, feel pretty secure about the boat going uh, through whatever this thing throws at us here. So one of the big dangers for the big boats here in the marina is washing up on this seawall, you know, so that's why it's real important to get all the lines super secure. And if it's a major storm, get the boats out of the marina because if you got the water coming up, you know, two, three feet above, uh, you know, the ground here, obviously those boats can wash up here. And if the boat ends up on dry land and then the tide falls out, that's a really bad situation to be in. But again, this one's not looking like it's gonna be a major storm and we're not gonna have any kind of uh, major storm surge from it. But um, that's definitely one of the reasons why you gotta get these big boats out of the marina if uh, you have something like that approaching. All right, so under the guide dock here, everyone just kind of has lifted their boats up a little extra high, you know, just to keep them up uh, away from the water as much as they can. And of course, secured anything that might be flying around. That's an easy thing to do, you know, the boat lifts can just kind of lift them up a little bit higher. If it was a major storm, everyone could just throw their boat on a trailer. Uh, that's a real easy thing to do and just move it to dry land somewhere high, obviously. But again, nobody's super worried about this one here. So everyone's just got everything lifted up a little higher than they normally would. And of course, you know, things secured that might go flying around or they should be anyways. But that's about all we got going on under here. So we got the sea craft lifted up nice and high here and uh, just a lot of the things normally that are laying around the dock just put in buckets in here so they're not going to go flying away. But everything's looking pretty good. I think she'll do all right here. So in Hurricane Irma back in 2017, my memory always goes back to this building, the barn, you know, kind of is like ground zero. Water came up, you know, I mean, this high, it was about two feet into every building on the property. So, I mean, you could be swimming in here. And because this barn sticks out on a little point, you know, a little peninsula, 
everything from up the beach, you know, that got washed down, just got sucked into here. This whole bottom layer, you know, of the barn that's open now got ripped out and it was just like a massive junk pile in here. Um, I mean, there was stuff stacked up about yay high. Yeah, you know, it really looked like a bomb exploded. That's just a memory that's stuck in my mind and it's crazy to think, you know, Mother Nature can do that. So hopefully she'll stay nice and clean after this one, which I think she will. <laughs> One of the other things that's a good reminder to do this time of year is trimming the coconut trees. Coconuts, obviously, they become like a uh, projectile missile when they're coming out of a coconut tree in a hurricane. Um, so it's a good time to uh, make sure you trim your coconut trees. We're gonna get right on that soon. Boats, <laughs> they gotta take a few charters to learn first. Yeah, so good thing with the preparation here, you know, you don't ever really know what these storms are gonna do. Um, perfect example is Hurricane Ian last year in Fort Myers. Uh, ended up being one of the top five, if not top three, you know, deadliest storms um, on record, as well as, you know, most costly. You know, and that storm was a little bit similar to this. You know, it was going up the Gulf and it just took a hard right turn and um, went right into, you know, Fort Myers, Naples area and rapidly intensified with uh, the heat, you know, in the water in the Gulf, which is a record this year, these things can get really strong really fast and you just really never know what they're gonna do. You always gotta be prepared, you know. It's a good idea to check everything and that's why we're here doing this and everything's looking pretty good for us so far. Captain Dylan of the B&M doing an oil change. Sir. We're getting a lot of play time on the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm How is boat ownership after, how's long has it been, three years or two and a half? Almost three years now. Almost three years, how's the boat ownership treating you? I mean, Tell them the truth, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, a lot of responsibility. You gotta want it. You gotta want it, that's his saying. So, you gotta want, gotta it, want it on the b and I think Ricky's gonna tell you the, the final word. What did Jerry Springer used to say? What was the final thing he said at the end? Final thoughts. Final <laughs> thoughts. Yep. Final thoughts. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Again, this storm doesn't look like it's gonna be too much to really worry about here, uh, damage-wise. To be honest, it's probably gonna be kind of a good thing for us. Our bay's been so hot lately with all the calm weather we had through uh, a lot of July and August that I think, you know, some good 30 mile an hour winds and rain is gonna cool things off, stir things up a little bit. Probably get the fish uh, snapping a little bit when this is all over too, so, um, you know, come on down and go fishing. September's a great time to be here, it's quiet very few tourists around and lots of guys looking to go out there and catch some fish. So keep in touch and we'll let you know what's going on. Lane, are you doing the closing? The outro? Yeah. The outro for the video. What's that? The goodbye section of the YouTube video. Yeah, I'll do it. Well, what let's do it. We're on camera. What do I say? Is my hair okay? Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video. Call the Marine office if you want to book a trip. Come in here, buy some shirts, buy some ice cream, and get on down here to Alamada. Yeah. You got it? You're up. Thanks for watching. That's good. Tell them to come down here and fish with us. Okay. Glenn Marys. I need to compose myself. I'm on the spot. I'm on the spot. I tried to get Lanny to do a cameo. <laughs> I tried to get Lanny to do the cameo to end the video, but hope you all enjoy that fishing report. Give the Marine Office a call here. Lanny, Alex. We'll get you set up. Will be on video? No. Nope. Oh. Some of the crew. They will be on video. Oh my said, god, so. start it over. Start it over. <laughs> this is gonna be so in the outtakes. This will be good. Alright, ready Dave? Let's do it. Are you doing it? Yeah. Okay. Hit it. Thanks for watching. Give us a call at the marina office here. We'll get you set up. Got all you need to fish here. Ice cream, beer. What else do you need? Lots of shirts. Lots of shirts. Lots of t-shirts and hats. <laughs> and it's slow season. The hotel rooms are open. The houseboats are open. Not every day, but give us a call and get you in there. And hopefully we'll see you guys down here at Bud Mary's. Good job. Tight lines. High five. <laughs>